tell you what happened. I went out last night, and I got his stuff. When I woke up, his morning should have seen what I had in the bed with me. He jumped up out of bed, pulled his hand down his eye. Looked at me like a guy in Canada that come out on me. He said, he said, So this time we're way off the We got all along. Satan was going to get right. She jumped out of the car. She put her hand down her eyes. She looked at me like a dime box in my mouth. Now, gee. Hassel Atkins is, uh, depending on what your perspective is, a, a rockabilly hero, cult favorite, or an alcoholic pest. Who's greater, Elvis or the Hayes? Hayes is. <laughs> I mean, I'm an Elvis fan, big fan. And right now, I don't believe he's even dead, but Hayes has got him beat. He drove off a cliff at 100 miles an hour. He'd get girls in the car and back them into telephone poles and ram them and, you know, have sex in the middle of the road, just, you know, because that's what was going on. He said, do you know a hassle ad? <laughs> so I just started laughing. I said, yeah, the band, the one-man band. And he said, this guy says he's a rock and roll star in Europe. And he was laughing. I said, yeah. I think that's probably true. Everywhere he would play, the girls would go wild over. No matter where it was at, where he parked, or where he played, they were there. They went wild. They screamed. You couldn't hear anything. Hazel's the wildest man there ever was. I mean, forget that girl in uh, Stranger Than Paradise that walks around saying that Screaming Jay Hawkins, he's a wild man. Uh, Screaming Jay can't hold a candle to Hazel. And Hazel's hardly even trying. <laughs> Hassel's whole concept uh, when he first heard stuff on the radio was um, this, that let's see, the announcer would go, this is Lefty Frizzell or this is Hank Williams, you know, but they didn't say like this is Hank Williams and the Drifting Cowboys. Hassel didn't picture, you know, five guys behind him. I'm talking when he's a real little kid. So when he first started learning, he'd say, well, that's Hank Williams and Hank Williams is playing this and this and this. So, you know, he just figured, Hank Williams was playing everything. I gotta yeah. play everything. Thank goodness he didn't wasn't into like the Glenn Miller Orchestra or you know. How's <laughs> that? My name is Irene Jean Dolan. I live on Camp Creek and Bab Julian. I've been here for forty five years. My age is sixty two. I was born in Seco, West Virginia. And Hassel Adkins is my baby brother. He started to beating on his guitar his water bucket for a guitar. My daddy, he said, son, go out behind Chimney Corner and beat on that. said, uh, you'll drive me crazy with it. So he goes to Chimney Corner and he beats and beats. That's where he practiced. He stayed and that's where he learned. And he listened to Hank Williams and Jimmy Rogers and all them legends. And he thought they were doing that theirself, which they was not, which he thought they was. So he took it from there and he started. Well, when I went to California in 1956, uh, uh, the fellow that backed Frankie Avalon, Richie Fallon, Fabian, 
and well, there was a lot more. Uh, he had them, they was real big guys in L.A., but they hadn't spread across the country, just local stuff. But they was doing real good, and they knew they were going to go over, which they did go over. So uh, uh, I auditioned for him and everything. He said, well, give me your phone number, and where you're staying at, and where you live at, or him what. And I give that to him, so uh, I ended up uh, waiting. I waited about around a month or something like that, and nobody showed up. And I was staying over the other people, and I didn't like that. So I just opted to come back home. I left out at 10 o'clock uh, at night out of L.A., coming back home. And about three or four days after I got here, well, I got a letter from uh, uh, Whitey, the person I was staying with, the man and his wife. Uh, that he come up the next morning. I left at 10 o'clock at night. He come up around 10 o'clock the next morning. He said, what's well, Hassan? I'm ready now to take him down and start making, you know, posters and all this and that and cutting the record and start my motor and see what I could do with him. When Hassel got back from California, his, his buddies out there who he was staying with were saying, well, this talent scout's looking for you and that talent scout's looking for you, you know. But, um, you know, Hassel was already back. I guess he might have reconsidered and even went back out to California if he could have done it. Uh, I think at the time, you know, like I said, it, he was interested in country, he was doing country music. And, you know, I think that's what he was trying to slot into. Like he was on the town hall party with Patsy Klein and stuff, but, and Collins' kids and things. but. When Hassel got back to West Virginia, almost immediately, he got in this accident that still hurts his back to this day. He can't stay in the car a long time. Uh, apparently, 100 miles an hour, he went over a cliff and just cracked up. His best friend died. He got hurt. He was laid up for months. And, you know, that slowed him down. That's what slowed Carl Perkins' career down the scene. Same kind of deal. Well, I missed him by just hours, because I left town at 10 o'clock at night, and he'd come 9 o'clock next morning. So I come on back here and uh, stayed here. My daddy ended up dying, and I had to stay with my mother there for the next, what you say, 25 to 30 years with her. To... Well, I didn't really want to walk off and leave her, you know. But I just kept writing songs and playing around locally and all this and that, you know. And sending tapes and records throughout the whole world, you know, hoping somebody would pick up one of them or something. So I guess that's it. Ready? Look here. I'm going away, can't you see? Look here, mama. Go away, go away, can't you see? Oh, gee, she don't love me. I was in the prosecutor's office in Boone County and I encountered Hassel when he had some minor scrapes with the law and me, I was I was interested in Hassel because he seemed very pleasant and really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I, he was uh, a different sort of person so I asked around about Hassel and I was immediately inundated with Hassel Agon stories. He was something of a, of a local phenomenon, a local legend. He was viewed as extraordinarily eccentric. The first time I met Hassel, I got a call from the, the U.S. magistrate. Hassel had been indicted in the Southern District of West Virginia Federal Court for uh, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. And uh, the magistrate called me and told me that he had a case for me, and I said I was too busy to do it. He told me that I was... Uh, being called upon to represent a guy who lived in a $40 a month shack in Boone County, West Virginia, but who was a rock star in Europe. And I immediately assumed that the guy was crazy. And so I said, well, you're exactly right, Your Honor. This man needs... Yeah, I love you. 
He walked in with four albums that had all been done in Europe in the last year. And uh, it was wild. I mean, and all these fan letters from all over the world with uh, checks in them for pictures of him and autographs and stuff, joining the Haslakens fan club. Well, I want to explain. I get a lot of letters from fans all over the world, and they all want to know what the hunch is. Well, hunch is a dance. It ain't, uh, uh, it ain't, uh, where I guess it concerns sex, but it's still a kiss of dance. It ain't, it ain't, uh, uh, something that you would, uh, consider bad. It's just going where you want to take it, you know. And I think it's a really, one of the best, I think it's the best dance they ever had. I mean, out of all the dances they ever had, I think it's the best one. And everybody seems to like it and everything, but nobody don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, I don't know, I tell you the truth. I just don't know how to answer that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the hunch. <laughs> the hunch. As I understand it, it has, it has been explained to me, it's a dance that's been developed by Hassel. A dirty dance. <laughs> You love me, baby, I love you. Come on, put it, baby, let's touch that thing. Shake that thing. Shake that thing. Shake that thing. Burn that thing. Let's take a picture of that thing. I want a big one. I want a great big one. I want an eight for ten. Man, I want to see what that thing is. People talk about my songs like they're bad and everything, like says, do the split, I mean, well, the name of them, just show me your split, that's a new one. Well, you'll hear them sooner or later. But, uh, and like, shake that thing, hunch that thing, let me take a picture of that thing. Look, you love me, baby, I, love you. I want an eight for ten of that thing. If you get a bigger one, you send it to me. But anyway, what I'm saying, they, but shake that thing could be anything. You could be shaking your hand, shaking your foot, or well, you could be doing this, rocking the baby's sleep. So it could be anything. We what way you want to take it. If you got a bad mind, you want a hunch or something like that. I can't help it. Okay, I've uh, dealt with uh, Hassel off and on for probably the last 12 years. I've arrested him for uh, discharging firearms from a vehicle at road signs. I've been to his home several times for supposedly holding his girlfriend hostage when in fact she was a willing participant, but she would just want us to get, out, get her out of there and take her home for her family just to ride. Hassel had gotten into this scrape because he, his girlfriend's husband, let me get this right, his girlfriend's husband had uh, thrown a brick through Hassel's windshield of his truck and this apparently festered in Hassel a while. And he and two other guys went out apparently roaring drunk through this guy's house. Well, Hassel denied that he had been intentionally drinking. But they go out to this guy's trail where he is, and it's absolutely, these three drunks go out to have a shootout with this guy with a sawed-off shotgun, and one of the guys is too drunk to get out of the car, so he doesn't end up being charged. But they get out, and the boyfriend's 12-year-old daughter comes out and sees him and says, Daddy, don't go outside. There's men out there with a gun. But in true boot, what I like to think of as true Boone County style, he immediately goes outside. They're shooting at him. They're so far away with a sawed-off shotgun that they can't do any damage. 
but he runs back inside and breaks the windows out of the trailer and begins returning fire with I think a 22 and a 12 gauge shotgun with his girlfriend reloading for him. The only person that has any sense in this whole thing is the 12 year old girl who grabs her younger siblings and takes out the back door and gets the hell out of the way. But they have an incredible, like 30 or 40 shots are exchanged. And nobody gets seriously hurt. All four, pe four, all four people have to go to, to, uh, to the hospital and their total medical bills with like 30 or 40 shots exchanged. The total medical bill for all four of them was $190. <laughs> we were at the Price Hill Grill one night. And he was playing Donahoe Boogie. Donahoe was a uh, state police in Boone County at the time. And he was singing Donahoe Boogie. <laughs> and the fan, they had a wall fan. And he kept watching the wall fan and getting slower and slower with his music. And pulled out a shotgun and shot the ball fan out. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> the fan wouldn't turn right. <laughs> Here's a good part. Let me read this first paragraph. All by his lonesome, this trans-Atlantic Boone County court legend was bashing out animal rhythms that all but took your limbs hostage. As he battered his guitar to within a beat of its life, Atkins' feet pounded bass drums and high hat pedals. A small cowboy hat anchored securely with a chin strap hung on for the ride as Atkins whooped and hollered like a wounded hellcat. The only thing missing was a toy holster and gun.
I can say about Hassel's music is a lot of performers play music 
so that the audience hears it and they applaud. They go home and they forget about the music. They forget about the concert. You know, two or three days later, they, you know, yeah, it was a nice concert, but they didn't hear it. Hassel plays so that when you go home, you remember it and you remember it for a long time to come. Come on, baby, come on, baby, don't you be late. I want your head, I'm on it tonight. I want your head at half past eight. Having on my wall about a half past ten. Yeah, come on home, baby, I want that head. Come on home, baby, I want that head. I want your head hanging on my wall tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something about the police here in Boone County, the whole West Virginia, and all over the world. That I really do. I've been in a lot of trouble myself, but I really do appreciate the job that they're doing. Especially here in Boone County, they have been good to me. From the state police, the federal, on down to the county, all of them has really been good to me. And I also want to say that uh, I'm looking for a good music lawyer, somebody that really took to music schooling and everything, because I've got a lot of, uh, of companies that done me wrong, took my songs, put them out, no rights, no nothing, and I, I like to get a hold of a good lawyer, I mean a good music lawyer. I've been hunting for years now trying to get one, and sooner or later I'll find one. And I want to know, uh, if they want to uh, contact me, they can get my address. That's my name, Hassel Agnes, post office box 668, 668 Madison, West Virginia. That's M-A-D-S-O-N, W-V-A, 25130. And they can find me like that, and I'll get back in contact with them. Thank you. Be my guest. We're going to.